Okay, this is going to be the introduction to uh, how to read music notation. So I'm going to walk you through some of the basics here, reading the music notes and the staff and treble clef and all that stuff. All right, so first thing we need to look at is the staff. The staff is going to be one, two, three, four, five lines and one, two, three, four spaces. Okay? Now, to actually be able to put this into some sort of construct, we need to have lines. So these are called bar lines. Bar lines are going to separate us into what are called measures. So if you turn this, it kind of looks like a ruler, and rulers measure things. So this whole thing is called a measure. These are called bar lines. The whole thing is called the staff, the music staff. Now what do the lines and spaces mean? Each line and each space is going to represent a sound. The lower you are on the staff, the lower the sound. The higher the higher the sound. Now we don't know exactly what note we need yet because we don't have what's called a clef. Over here we're going to put a clef. And there are a few different types of clefs. But the first one we are going to start with is the treble clef. The treble clef is an old-fashioned way of saying the letter G. And we swivel around the second line here. What that is telling us is that the second line is G. Based off of that line being G, I can now figure out where the rest of the notes are. The music alphabet goes from A all the way to G, and then it restarts. So if I have a note where I go A, and then I go up, I go to B. C, up to D, to E, up to F, up to G, and then if I keep going up, I simply restart at A. If I'm going down, C, B, A, and I have to keep going, I simply restart at G. There is no H note, there is no I note, no L note, no Z note, only A through G. So I know this is G. Each line in each space is going to be one letter. So line or space equals one letter. So I start on the line. That is a G. That is going to get one letter. I go up to the next space and I go up. Since there's no more notes after G, I start at A. A. I go up to the next line. That gives me the note B. Space C, line, D, space, E, line, F. Now I go back to G and go down to the space. F, down, E. And those are the basic notes of the treble clef staff. If you notice, we have a few acronyms that you can remember this by. Space spelled out face, F-A-C-E. E-G-B-D-F, 
every good boy does fun. If you remember those, it helps when determining what note you are on. So if I were to draw a note here over the line, and I remember every good boy, I know I'm on B. If I draw a note on the space, the third space, space spells face, F-A-C-E. I have the letter C. Now that we know what the notes are, we need to know how many counts each measure is going to get and what kind of beat we are going to feel as the tempo. So here, I'm going to put what's called a time signature. So I'm going to Time signature. The time signature is going to tell us that we have four beats per measure with the top number, and that the quarter note gets the beat as the bottom number. Top number tells us what, how many notes in a measure. The bottom number tells us what kind of note gets the beat, okay? So I'll put that down here. Four, four beats per measure. What kind of notes? It's the beat. Based off of this information, we can start to formulate our music. We have our clef, we have our time signature. There eventually will be one more thing in between called a key signature, but we're not gonna worry about that quite yet. We have a bar line here and here, which creates a measure. Pieces can have many measures, can have hundreds of measures even. The point of a bar line the point of a time signature and the point of a clef is to keep us in a construct because sound is abstract. We need a way to make it concrete. Now there is one more thing that we're going to look at here and that is called ledger lines or going off of the staff. If you remember the concept that every space in line gets one note and that the music alphabet is A through G, you will be fine with any notes that are off of the staff. So as I go up, A, B, C, D, E, F, if I go to the space above the staff, I am now going to be at G. If I go to the next line, remembering that I have to keep going, I go back to A. I go to the space above that, B. If I go to the next line, C. And it keeps going. Every time I add a line, it is called a ledger line. Ledger line. So if I have a note here, below the staff, I know that the bottom line is E. I'm going to go down to the next note, D. So that is the note D. If I have another note on the line, I go then down one more note to the note C. And it would just keep going and going and going. Okay? So here's the basics of reading music notation we still will get into a lot more with rhythms and with many other symbols um, that will tell us to do different things such as get louder, get softer, get faster, get slower, what kind of speed the song is going to be, um, and maybe what kind of feeling you should give to the music, stylistic things such as play the note short 
or played a note long or played a note with emphasis and it goes on and on and on so this is a language it is a language just like English or Spanish and it takes a long time to learn a language so this is kind of like our ABC's of, of music and to be able to start to understand the words of music you need to get the letters down all right so if you have any questions about spelling these are all going to be in a file where you can look at this stuff too all right and you can check on spelling and check on um, you know exactly how you should uh, write certain things how do you draw a treble clef etc all right and that's it